Okay, this video is about polynomials, specifically about identifying in behavior and multiplicity. So general information. A graph is considered continuous if it has no breaks, gaps, or holes, smooth curves, no, no sharp turns or curves. So it's just basic function, no sharp turns means like there's not, it's not going to absolute value. Okay, that's a sharp turn. A discontinuous graph. Well, that would be something that could have sharp turns, breaks, gaps. It could be like this, kind of irrational. It could have a hole. It could have multiple issues. But there are breaks in the gap, so we call it discontinuous. The degree of a function is found by looking at the highest exponent in the equation. The higher the exponent, the flatter the graph is going to be. So if I gave you an example of 3x to the 6 plus 2x to the 5th plus 4, I would read this and realize, okay, here's my highest exponent. That tells me a lot about what the graph will look like. Since that power is even, I know both arms are going to go the same direction. The way to remember that is think about your quadratic. That's to the second power. That's your even power. Both the arms of the graph, the arrows, go the same direction. If it's odd, think about your quadratic. They go in opposite directions. Okay, that's x cubed, right? So all the odd ones will mimic this. All the evens will mimic this on the endings. The higher the power, the flatter the graph. So if this is a quadratic, this is x squared, then x to the 6 would flatten out more. That's what I mean by that. Okay, something like that. If it was x to the 5th, you know what a, a cubic looked like. If it was x to the 5th, it would flatten along there some more. So that's what I mean by flatten. The higher the power, the flatter it will be. Leading coefficient test. Now, you look for the coefficient of the highest degree in the equation. The degree and the sign of the coefficient determine the shape of the graph. Okay, so if I go back to what we just did, I think it was like this. Okay, we said this is the highest degree. Now, this coefficient right here tells me something else about it. All right, we know that both the arms are going to go in the same direction because it's even, but this three will tell me more. This first column is about the degree. So I first look at the degree. It's, it's even, so I know it's even. That 3 is a positive number, so I know it's positive, which means both arms are going to go up, so it is going to look like a happy face. All right. If that 3 had been negative, then I would know that both arms would go down and be a frowny face. Okay, odd. Okay, if it's positive, it's like your basic cubic. Okay. If it's a negative coefficient, then it's it's going to fall, rise to the left and fall to the right. So it's really just the opposite of what you saw there. So you need to learn this table. You need to know these, the, these little things. Go back to your basics. Think about your cubic. Think about your quadratic. And then the negatives basically flip them. So here's some examples of what to do. Describe the behavior of these functions. All right, look at this. I look at the highest exponent only. The rest of the equation, I don't even care about. Okay, I notice that it's odd and it's negative, right? So you should have that table written down. That should tell you something. What's going to happen to my graph? Okay, it's odd and negative. So normally, it would be like this. But since it's negative, it's going to go this way. So what's happening here? It rises to the left, falls to the right. Okay, that's how you describe the end behavior of a graph. Look at number two. Look at this. The highest power of the equation is what I look at. The rest of it doesn't matter. Notice that this is even. So it is even. And the coefficient is just a 1. It's a positive 1. So that should tell me from the graph that both arms are going to go up because it's positive and it's even. All right, zeros and multiplicity. Zeros you've heard of before. Zeros are basically your x-intercepts. Where does the function cross the x-axis? It's a location thing. Multiplicity describes how it's going to cross. Is it going to just touch the axis, like bounce off? Is it going to cross through like normal? Or will it flatten through that point? So these are some new options for you. The way you know the multiplicity is when you have factored the equation completely. You know, this is a little cryptic, but this is just a normal old factor. Let's say it's x minus 4 squared. 
Remember, that means that it's crossing the x-axis at 4, 0, right? And the power here tells me how it crosses, all right? So if the k, that's the power, if it's even, it's going to touch or we say it bounces off that axis. So it would look like this. It would just bounce right there. If that k value right there is just a 1, then it crosses through. Okay, if it had been x minus 4, just like that, then it would cross through right there, just like normal. If it was odd and greater than 1, so let's say it was a 3, odd and greater than 1, that means it's going to flatten through that point. It's going to look something like this. It flattens a little bit. It doesn't just go straight through. It flattens. So you have to factor and you have to look at the power of that factor to determine how it's going to cross. And that's what we call multiplicity. All right, so let's figure out the multiplicity of equations. Here's what you do. These are the steps you always need to follow. First, factor your equation as much as you can. So in this one, I notice, what do they have in common? They have a 2. That first coefficient is negative 2, so I'm going to take a negative 2 out. And how many x's do they have in common? Well, they each have two x's, so I'm going to factor x squared out. So that leaves me with a positive x squared minus 1. Notice that the power right here is just a 1. Okay, so I've gotten this far, that power is 1. But what I should notice is that this is a difference of squares. It factors as pl x plus 1 x minus 1. You want to get your x's down to the first power as much as you possibly can. So I can keep factoring this. This portion over here I can't factor any further, so I'm just going to leave it there. Now I have three parts. That means I have three zeros. So I set each one of these equal to zero. Okay, so to find my zeros I solve it for x. Well, Divide by negative 2, it's still going to be 0. Square root of 0 is 0. So my x here is a 0. My x here, if I solve that as negative 1, this x is a positive 1. All right? So this is my 0. And then for multiplicity, I look at the power here. The power here was a 2. Okay? So since it's even, multiplicity is a 2, I say it touches. Or you could say bounces. My multiplicity here, look at your factor. That power right there is just a 1. Since it's a 1, it just crosses through this point. This factor of x minus 1, that power right here was just a 1 as well. So it has a multiplicity of 1, which tells me it crosses the graph. Okay, So it is a complex answer. You have zeros, the multiplicity, and then description for each one of these. So visually, what's happening here? Um, where x is 0, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to um, just touch right here. Sorry, touch right there. At negative 1, it's going to cross. And at positive 1, it's going to cross. And if you look back from what we just did with end behavior, we know that both arms are going to end up in the same direction. But since it's a coefficient of negative 2, then it's going to be ultimately a sad face. So what's happening is it's going to do this. it bounces right here where x is 0. We'll get into more of how to graph this later, but I just want you to see what the graph would look like with this, roughly. Let's try another one of these, okay? Factor completely. What do, what's the greatest common factor here? It's a 5. Take that out. You get x squared plus 3x plus 2. This continues to factor. You get x plus 2, x plus 1, and then there's that 5. Set each of these equal to zero. Well, that's never going to equal to zero, which just means it, I don't need to worry about it. x plus 2 equals zero. x plus 1 equals zero. Solve each one of these. This, like I said, you can throw that out. because it's not even, 5 is not equal to zero. Solve it. x is negative 2. x is negative 1. Then I look at the power of each factor. Both of these have just a power of 1. So that my multiplicity is just... 1. So it just crosses. Alright, so if I look at my equation, 
highest power exponent there, it is even. And the 5 is positive, so it tells me it's going to make a smiley face. All right. So it's going to cross at negative 2, and it's going to cross at negative 1. So my smiley face does this. Okay. So for the whisk, you're going to take this equation. You're going to describe for me the end behavior in words. Remember, you're only looking at the highest exponent and its coefficient, and that will determine what are the two arms of your graph doing. Go in the same direction, opposite direction, falling right, rising right. Go back to that table that we did a few slides back, and you should be able to interpret that. And we'll work somewhere on multiplicity in class, but please come prepared with questions if you have them.